Whatever happened to the idea that kids will be kids? The idea that young people are allowed to make mistakes because of their age seems to be slipping away with the rise of technology. Nowadays, your every move is captured by someone's camera phone. This fear of messing up and having it stick around forever can sometimes be even worse for athletes. When it comes to collegiate football players, their public-facing role puts them on a different level of notoriety compared to other students. You know, when you're dealing with 18 to 22-year-olds, people do some dumb stuff. And, I mean, even to point out, the majority of the guys on the football team are African-Americans. We're typically bigger guys, and we're on a predominantly white campus where I think only 6% of the student body is black students. So tend to stand out when you go into those situations. So my mom and dad always told me growing up it's like people are going to recognize you because I was always a big kid they're like they're going to recognize you you stand out so make sure you're always on your best behavior I took that mentality to campus that's Joshua Perry former linebacker for the Indianapolis Colts and San Diego Chargers before that Perry had an incredible career with the Ohio State Buckeyes and graduated from university in 2015 Now, Perry spends his time off the field and in the TV studio, working as a Big Ten analyst for college football. Perry is no stranger to the spotlight, but how he handles the fame may be a bit different than most. If I said I didn't read tweets, you know, search my name on Twitter or whatever, I'd be a liar, and I think every player does it. You see athletes who will respond to tweets with just their name that they haven't been tagged in. It's because they were searching their name on Twitter. And I think human nature is... We want to be viewed favorably, and so we're going to want to see what people are saying about us. And now social media is funny because there is a level of anonymity where you can't know exactly who's saying what, but there is a little bit more transparency where you can know uh, what people are thinking or more how you're viewed. Perry says surviving the online world is one thing, but navigating the day-to-day stressors that come with fame has been a big learning curve. I think... In the NFL, also, it comes down to balance. And their time was always a balance you had as a student athlete. Social life was always a balance you had as a student athlete. But now you add money into that. So now you can get in more trouble with your time because you have money. So you can go to the clubs and you can buy things you're probably not supposed to be buying. You can literally hurt your time by spending your money the wrong ways. And then the social aspect of it, too, you want to be seen by people You have family, friends, et cetera, who are coming after you because they know you have money. And thankfully, that wasn't a situation for me, but I know it was like that for a lot of my teammates in the NFL. I think that you're never truly prepared to handle those situations because it's hard to tell those people no. It's hard to pick and choose who you want to truly spend your time with. You feel like you owe people because of what they might have invested in you in your past, et cetera. So the only thing, literally the only thing, that gives you comfort when you're a professional athlete is the fact that you're playing the sport that you love because outside of that, the football world becomes very uncomfortable. But what's it like to play at a different level? Are the pressures the same? Well, Washington University in St. Louis has one insightful quarterback who's determined to rise above it all. Johnny Davidson is the senior quarterback at Wash U and says social media, at whatever level you're playing at, can be a big distraction off the field. Obviously, social media has been you know, a huge thing growing up and obviously had, you know, I guess, a lot of important impacts to a lot of different aspects of society. I personally don't have a Twitter, so I don't really check that. I stopped using Twitter a while ago. I do have an Instagram, like Snapchat and stuff like that. I would say for the most part, though, I don't really go on there and check what people are saying you know, about me. Growing up, I've kind of always had that underdog mentality, you know, being an undersized quarterback. So I do my best, I guess, try and not let the outside audience or anything affect, I guess, what's going on inside my head. Joshua Perry shared that in Columbus, Ohio, football is life. During the fall months, everything and everyone revolves around Ohio State season. Stores shut down, all eyes turn to TVs, and a sea of red and white blankets the town. Yet the stakes aren't nearly as high in St. Louis when it comes to playing at Wash U. In the mid-sized Missouri City, locals simply have more sporting options to choose from in their backyard. Whether that means cheering on the St. Louis Cardinals at the baseball diamond or the St. Louis Blues in their hockey arena, it's a little different than playing for Ohio State on one of the largest stages in the Big Ten. 
But Davidson plays with a professional mindset and level of integrity, regardless of where he throws the pigskin. Whether people are speaking highly of me or, you know, if they're saying that I could do better than I am, I try and stay level-headed. And I think, at least here at WashU, people are very supportive of each other. I've never heard of one instance where people have been talking bad about somebody on social media or even from, like, an outside audience perspective. So I'd say for the most part, I guess, you know, speaking for myself, I definitely don't let, you know, social media get to me. But I would say for most athletes, I don't think they let social media get to them. There's not too much back and forth, I guess, with the student athletes here or even with the community or, you know, sports outside of here. We just kind of stick to our own, you know, put our head down, work as hard as we can, and we'll let the outcomes happen, and we'll see what happens from there. Football players at both Ohio State and WashU are able to live relatively ordinary lives, including the ability to join fraternities if they can keep up with their other commitments. But once it comes to the NFL there is definitely less time for fun and more time for games. There's a step up, I think, in maturity and professionalism when you become a pro. And the maturity aspect is understanding how much of a business it is and understanding what it truly takes and how much work it takes to be successful. What can fans and football players at any level learn from Perry and Davidson's varied college experiences? It's to be respectful and receptive in the world of sports. The struggles of social media and technology aren't going away anytime soon. So be nice to the athletes that are on the receiving end of the 24-7 commentary. Perry also had some closing words to remind us all of just how drastic times have become. Everybody can be a brand, which I think is a really good thing for athletes. And I think that there is a responsible use of social media that can help athletes. It can help them disseminate important messages. It can help them build brands, which in turn helps them build money, all that other stuff. But then there's a negative aspect where all the news is at your fingertips. So if people are criticizing you or they're criticizing your team or your teammates, you can read that. You know, there's the aspect of Andrew Luck retires and the news gets leaked and it's all over social media and he gets booed off the field. You know, there's the aspect of guys who get traded and they don't know they got traded or they don't know they got cut from a team until they saw the news come up on their social media page or coaches getting fired even. When I was in San Diego, our defensive coordinator who got fired didn't know he was fired until he opened up his Twitter. Athletes are now so much more than the sum of their stats. They are evaluated on their words and actions, both online and off. Running faster isn't enough anymore. Being on your game, even off the field, is the new advantage. To find out more about this topic and both of our guests, Joshua Perry and Johnny Davidson, visit viewpointsradio.org. Also, follow Viewpoints Radio on Twitter and Instagram for more behind the scenes. This segment is written and produced by Annie Crawl. Studio production by Jason Dickey. I'm Marty Peterson. Viewpoints returns in just a moment. 2019 was a year of important discoveries about Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. Making news this year, researchers learned that Alzheimer's risk genes are different in men and women. This could help explain why two-thirds of people living with Alzheimer's are women. Other studies in 2019 found that vision and hearing loss may increase dementia risk, especially when both sensory impairments are present. There are also new discoveries about lifestyle. According to Dr. Keith Fargo, Director of Scientific Programs and Outreach at the Alzheimer's Association. A healthy diet and regular exercise are good for your overall physical health. But researchers have also found that they can reduce your risk for cognitive decline and dementia. These healthy habits, along with things like cognitive stimulation, may even help people who are at high risk due to their genes. Researchers say a simple blood test to detect Alzheimer's earlier is on the horizon. And two recent announcements have increased hope for new Alzheimer's drug treatments. To learn more about Alzheimer's research and how you can participate, visit ALZ.org. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you can donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-835-1478. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. 
Call Heritage for the Blind right now. Call 1-800-835-1478. Donating is easy and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher for donating. Call now, 1-800-835-1478. That's 1-800-835-1478. And that's Viewpoints for this week. Viewpoints is a production of MediaTracks Communications. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more about upcoming shows. And find a library of past programs on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and more information about our guests at viewpointsradio.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Viewpoints. Coming up next week... Everything from school lunch programs to technology to where they're going to locate schools, all of that is based on people answering their census and us knowing that you're out there. Don't forget to fill out your census form this spring. Then, What addiction involves, actually, is a disease of those systems that control your decision-making. So it's a disease of decision-making. Why is it that some people can reach sobriety and others can't? I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in-depth on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. Viewpoints.